to see uh, some faces we haven't seen in some time here. Yeah. Welcome them back. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of love this morning. Yeah. Amen. 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 So much going on in this world. It's going to be a busy month. There's going to be a lot of distractions. But what's important is the message of the heart of it. Why we're here and who we are and who we are here. Amen. So one is to let go of anything we might have brought in with. And shake it all off. This morning, why don't you really surrender any, any heaviness, anything that we might be going through? What if this is a defining service that really broke some things in your life? What if this is the service that really caused that connection to deepen between you and our Heavenly Father? What if this is that, that service that really just made all the difference in your life? And I want us to really come back to that place of worship where the music fades and all is stripped away. Mm. And all that is just us and the Heavenly Father. Alright, so let's open in prayer this morning. Let's begin. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every person that you've already brought through the doors. There are people that are on their way, Father God, and we pray for blessing and protection on the roads. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father God, that it is a warmer day, a day that we can feel your warmth. Father God, may you be honored by our worship, may you be honored by our praise. You brought us through this week, and it might not be easy for some of us, but it's difficult, but it's hard. Things have been going on, but Father God, we're here now to lift you high. Yes. High, 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 we're here to lift you up, Father God. We're here to shake off any heaviness, any burdens, and just come back to you. Father God, may you restore our souls, may you restore our minds and bodies. Restore us to who you have created us to be, Father God. Let go of anything that may be hindering you from really deepening your love and your connection for us, Father God. We just want to experience you today, Father God. Break through anything that may be limiting us or hindering us. Set us free. Set us free this morning, Father God. Any tormenting thoughts, feelings, discouragement, we let it all go now. We turn the service over to at least you, Father God, from beginning to end. May you have your way in our hearts, in our church, and in our community. And in Jesus' we pray. Amen. 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 Are we ready to praise and worship this morning? Amen. Let's just lift our voices out to the Lord. Hallelujah.
Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Praise God. We're glad to be glad to this morning. Amen. We came to church. We know God always has something for us. Amen. And we're here to worship and praise Him this morning. This song is called, Do You Hear What I Hear? Hear what I hear.
upon us, and He loves us just as we are. And as He's making changes in all of us, He just continues to give us strength for each day that we get up. Amen. He gives us love. He gives us support. He just pours down all of His wonderful gifts of tender mercies and grace. And we love Him so much, and we're so grateful for everything that He does. So no matter where we're at this morning, we know that we are loved by God. We know that He will get us through whatever it is that we may be going through. Amen. Because He's so faithful, He's so loving, and He's so true. So we just pray, Lord, bless your name this morning, and we praise you with all of our hearts. Let me just tell you, Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. And it's because of you that we are here. It's because of you that we can praise you, Lord. That we can open our mouths and our hearts are filled with longing, Lord, that one day we will see you face to face. And what a beautiful time that will be. Your name is so glorious and so mighty and so powerful. And Lord God, we get to use that name. Lord, to pray over people, Lord, and to just exalt you. And we love you and we praise you today, Lord. Just bless the rest of the service, Lord, as we go on. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You may be seated.
And we know it's not an easy thing to lose a loved one, but we are all here standing with you and we're pouring out our love on you. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our sister Elaine. She's such a blessing to our church in so many wonderful ways. And yet we know, Lord, that when somebody leaves us, somebody close to our heart, our brother, Lord, that you are there to compensate. You are there to care for her, to love on her, to strengthen her and her family, Lord. Yet they were caught off guard. Nobody was expecting this, Lord. But we know where he is. He's with you. He was a believer and he loved you with all his heart. So we just pray that you will continue to strengthen the family throughout the weeks ahead, Father, as you pour your love into their lives, as you wrap, wrap your loving arms around them to comfort them. We just give you praise this morning for all that you do, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
many of you realize how old it is? I know it's warmed up a bit, but how many of you realize it's old? Try to imagine those in need who are lacking some basic things. So, it's time to bring in tubes, mitts, warm blankets, socks, and other gently used warm clothing, right? We like to see everyone appropriately <coughs> for Edmonton winters, right? Yes. All right. Now, it's my favorite part. I'm going to need three testimonies, guys. I want to thank the Lord today for His faithfulness, His kindness, and His grace. I have been away for a while. And uh, actually, I've been very sick. My uh, doctor told me that I should give Pastor Marley and Brother Neil a thank you because they probably saved my life. Um, I had picked up in my travels a serious virus that affected and shut down my kidney. And my doctor, when I was released from the hospital a couple of days ago, I had to go from the hospital to my personal doctor. And she told me that the possibility of me inspiring the night that I went to the hospital was more than likely. And uh, I've lost close to 70 pounds. And I'm extremely weak. But I want to tell you something. God had everything I needed to get me to where I am today. Amen. In place. Yes. And waiting for me to get there. And I want to thank my our sister Elaine. Yes. yes. Because she stepped in big time. Yes, she did. She stepped in big time. Amen. And this, I personally believe, is the security of those who put their faith in God. Amen. That whatever you need is in place yes. when you get there. And God has the final say, no matter what it is, or what you're going through, or what the enemy has in store for you, God has the final say, and it's not over till he says it's over. And that is our security. That is our security. That when we are a child of God, he has the final say in everything yes, that affects our lives. Yes, every minute of every day that you breathe. Mm -hmm. And I see that clearly. Mm -hmm. And I am not, I do not, I was going in and out of consciousness by the time Pastor Marine and Brother Neil insisted that I go to the hospital. But I remember. I have never been so cold in all my life it was from the inside out. Yeah. I felt like my bones were packed in ice. And I remember laying there, coming fully aware, I don't know how long I've been there, but for the first time, I can recall, I said to the Lord, you know, if you want to call me home right now, I'm comfortable with that. And I believe that that's the turning point when I started to recover. It's when I finally let everything go and said, okay, but I want to assure everyone that is listening to me today that when you're walking with the Lord, 
It's not over till he says it. That's it. That's it. And every day you meet will be there when you get there. That's the God we serve today. Praise God. Thank you for that powerful testimony. Lord, 
that are able to take care of each other and to love each other. Let forgiveness flow in this home, Father God. Let healing come. Let restoration come to each and every person. Heal the heart of man right now, Heavenly Father, for all that she has been through. Heal her, Lord. Lord, help her, Lord, to put it in your hands and to trust you, Lord, that you see her right where she's at. And that, Lord, you have a plan for not only her life, but for each and every one in her family. And Lord, we just want to love on them all and pray that you would help them through this difficult time, Lord, to see your face and to look to you as the author and perfecter of their faith and the captain of their salvation. We just give it to you, Lord. You have an answer, Lord. And we trust you that you can heal this family and, and just turn it around and make it the best family, Lord God, that will bring glory and honor to your name. We thank you for this, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' precious name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go for communion now.
We ask it now in the name of Jesus. Father, if there's anything in our hearts, any sin there, Lord, that is grieving your spirit right now, we ask forgiveness. Lord, that you would forgive us and cleanse us from every sin of all unrighteousness, Lord, as we stand before you today. We ask that you would apply your precious blood. Just wash us on the inside, Father God, and let us be pleasing in your sight, Father, this morning. We thank you for this, in Jesus' name. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. That is my name. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake. Thank you, you need to see it.
the kind, the kind, give us an actual example. Down here. <laughs> Can you tell me something you can do when you are kind to someone? Maybe on this very first, because of love of God in your heart, you are in your situation. Hmm? You don't know? Alright. So let's work on that, okay? Let's work on being kind to others. Even when you think they don't deserve it. Because remember that God is always kind. Even when we don't deserve it. Alright? Let's work on that. 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 So let us pray. Close our eyes and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for another day. We thank you for your goodness, thank you for your grace, thank you for the giftings that you have placed upon these children. We pray especially for my younger siblings that your love will shine bright in their hearts, that we will enfold them, protect them, comfort them, pray for their parents, their father, God, and pray that the Holy Spirit will never leave them. I pray for transformation. Amen. Well, hopefully, that means 
making for a long time. And all of a sudden, he steps in and he shifts it. And he changes it. And game films were handled differently in those days than they are now. Marriages were prearranged by the parents, often when the kids were only infants. But there had to come a point when the couple became aware of the engagement and began to make plans. So let's imagine young Joseph this morning. The wedding day is approaching, and he is making preparations. Can you see, Mary, the day most women or young ladies live for is just around the corner. It's coming near. And she's so excited. She and her parents are making the wedding plans. She and Joseph have such dreams for their lives together. But then, God interferes with their plans. All of a sudden, he changed everything. It was not ever in their goal for Mary to become pregnant before their wedding night. And certainly the idea of becoming pregnant miraculously and giving birth to the Lord Jesus Christ was not the foremost of their thinking. Mary's reaction to the news was one of perplexity. And she asked in Luke, how shall this be to see it? I know, not man. Not a man. Joseph's reaction was just a little different. He has a decision to make now. Should he believe that Mary has been faithful to him and that she has miraculously become pregnant with the Son of God? He had a lot of things to process at that time. Or should he just break off the relationship? And he wanted to do it quietly, we know, so that she wouldn't be stoned. Of course you know the rest of the story. They did get married. They did give birth to the Messiah. And we know that the rest of the story is history. Now there are three observations based upon this biblical scene this morning. Number one, did God ask Joseph and Mary, did he ask them that he could change their plans? Does he ask you? Does he come and ask you, Maureen, can I change some of your plans? Does he get our permission? No, he doesn't. And I do not know any passage where the angel announcing God's plan asked Mary or Joseph if this is acceptable with them. God simply told them his plan and willed it for their lives. He changed everything. So how many of you are doing what you planned on, uh, let's say, when you were maybe in, in grade 12? When you got into grade 12, you had a lot of plans, things that you wanted to do. But something changed. Most of us aren't doing what we thought that we would be doing when we graduated. We changed our plans. You shouldn't because you're... You see, I have found that the majority of the plans that I had as a young woman are radically different than they are like way back then when I was thinking about what am I going to do with my life. You see, some of those plans have changed because I have changed my decisions and my desires. But other plans were changed because of circumstance beyond my control. God stepped in. And God has never asked me when he has chosen to put these circumstances into my life. He just came in and he began to shift and move and change things in my life. God has a plan for your life as well. He made that plan before he created this world. And he has no intention of asking your permission to proceed with his plan. Now you can choose not to obey his will, but you cannot change his will for your life. Do you hear me this morning? Secondly, God's plan for Mary and Joseph was not an easy plan. Sometimes we think that if we are in the will of God, everything will be a bed of roses, and life will be without trials or difficulty. Well, that was not the case for Joseph and Mary. And I want us to consider the following this morning. You see, let's ask the question, why didn't God work it out so that the task was collected either before Joseph and Mary were married or after the baby was born? You see, he could have done that, couldn't he? I mean, having a woman who was so pregnant that she just barely got to Bethlehem before 
before she had the baby, traveled by foot and camel or donkey, would not have been easy. Amen? Surely God could have worked things out better than that. But the baby was born in a manger because there was no room in the end. And again, I can see the young couple frustrated after traveling that far. Mary is exhausted and she's ready to deliver. And they cannot find any place comfortable even to take her. Now, God is solid. Amen? He's a solid God. He doesn't answer to anybody. He is able to do anything he wills. He obviously had will that there is no room, no room in the end. He isn't making it easy for them, is he? Even though they are obeying the will of God for their lives, God is not making it easy. Why were they forced to flee Bethlehem to Egypt because of the threat of King Herod? Again, we can see the hand of God at work because he warned them of the danger so that they could flee. Why did we just make the king's heart soften so that they would have to, didn't have to flee at all? Why did he make it easier? Especially since all the babies two years and older were killed by Herod's men after Mary and Joseph were gone. Why? Didn't God make it easier for Why did those babies have to die? The baby was about two years old when they went to Egypt. And that would not have been an easy trip to make. Then after all this, somewhere between when Joseph took his family back to Nazareth and when Jesus became 30 years old, Joseph died. Jesus had to become the head of his home, taking care of his mother and his half-brothers and sisters. So we make a terrible error in our concept of Christianity when we believe that God makes life easy when we are in his will, and that the easy way is always God's way. Take, for instance, Jesus' message about the two roads. Jesus said the bread, the broad and easy way that almost everyone takes is the way that leads to destruction. The straight and narrow, the more difficult way, is the way that leads to eternal life. Many people want to get on the easy road. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to have to answer for things going on in their lives. They just want to coast along. They want everything to be fine. Nobody wants to feel pain. Nobody wants to go through hard times. We just want to coast through. But because God is sovereign, he has another plan. And it's always a better plan, even though we have to suffer with it. Amen? You see, when we choose the way that looks the easiest, we aren't necessarily choosing the way that is the will of God. We've got to step back and talk to God a little bit. Christ chose a path that led to the cross. Paul chose a path that led to imprisonment and execution. Those two men alone suffered greatly as they walked their walks before the people. Life was not made easier for Jesus. It was not made easier for Paul. And for some of you sitting here this morning, it has not been made easy for you either. Amen? You've gone through some things. But God both chose paths that were in the plan of God for them. God does not promise us an easy trip. Amen? He promises to be with us as we take that trip. I'm sure many of you can testify of that. Dan is sharing his testimony this morning about what happened to him. No way would he have wanted to get that virus and end up in the hospital for all those weeks. Not knowing at times what was going on, whether he was coming or going, so close to death that his bones were cold, everything was cold inside, everything was shutting down. God's plan. It wasn't Genesis' plan, but it was God's plan. Amen? Some of you, like Elaine, lost a loved one. I'm sure that wasn't her plan. God's plan. God steps in. He does not promise us an easy trip. He promises as we take it. Here's the verse in Isaiah 43 and 2.
when thou passest through the waters, Jesus said, what I will be with you. <coughs> through the rivers, they shall not overflow me. When thou walkest through the fire, yeah, yeah, thou shalt not be burned, and neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's God's word. Observation three is this. Though things were difficult, God did bless. And this can be seen in two thoughts this morning. You see, they wondered as the child grew, as they looked at this little boy, they were wondering all kinds of things in their mind about Jesus. And we look at these verses in Luke 2.52. That Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with both God and man. And they were watching it unfold. And in Luke 2, 49 to 51, and he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Whilst you not, that I must be about my father's business. Jesus knew what it was all about. And they understood not the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. And was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. She did not know all that was yet to come. She just knew that God had stepped in and changed everything in her life around. I'm sure some of you knew Shelly. used to come to our church often. She's going through a very difficult time. Jack is very sick in the hospital. Would she have asked for that? No, not at all. But God has a plan. He doesn't always unfold it and tell us the way it should be. But it's happening. It's happening in Maddie's life as well. Would she have chosen to go through all these things in her young life? No. God has a plan. He has a purpose. And he will see her through it each step of the way as she puts her hope and her trust in him. The child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. She just looked around and thought about those things that were going on. She couldn't understand it all. She knew God was in control. And how many of us, when we step back, when we're in those places of uncertainty, wondering what is it all about? Do we know that he is in control, that he has allowed some things to come into our life? No, he didn't ask us permission. He is God. We are bought and paid by him. He owns us. He can do as he chooses to do. We may not always like it, but his best interest for us is still at heart. It must have been joy beyond belief to raise Christ as he grew up. And just that blessing would have been worth it all, even as she watched her son hanging on the cross at the end. She had to know God was in control of this situation. As Paul was in prison and beaten and gone through all kinds of horrendous things in his life, God chose those things. God knew what he was doing when he called Paul out from persecuting the church. God had a plan. God has a plan for us. And even though he's going through hard breathing and difficult times, he has a plan for you. And he hasn't forgotten you. He sees you right where you're at. And he will not forget you. Unfortunately, ultimately, Jesus grew up to be a blessing to the whole world. Any parent is blessed when their child grows up to be a person of influence and importance in the world. More parents are blessed if their children grow up to do something good for mankind. Now I realize that Joseph was gone by this time, but can you imagine the blessing Mary must have experienced when her first golden son, Jesus Christ, rose victorious over death and the grave? Can you imagine what she must have felt like as she watched him ascend visibly and boldly and gradually into heaven? Can you imagine the excitement in her soul when she realized in a very tangible way that her son has opened the door to heaven for all who would accept him and receive him as their savior? Mary, did you know? Did you know? God's plan for our lives isn't always an easy plan, church. 
But it is a plan that will lead to our being a blessing to not only ourselves, but many others that we come in contact with. Even if this plan is an early death, he is going to use that in some way, ultimately, to bring more people to a saving knowledge of truth. And I believe that because when I lost my son, I wouldn't have known all that God had in store for me down the road. God had a plan. And in that plan, it was for my son to die early. It was for me to lose a baby. God had a plan for me. It was for my son to get schizophrenia. For another son to have bipolar. God has a plan. It's never the plan that we think it will be. But it is what God planned because he knows what he is doing. He knows us every step of the way. And he knows what's going to help us to be the people that we're meant to be to bring glory and honor to his name. Amen? He has a plan, church. And even if his plan is a great death, he is going to use that in some way, ultimately, to bring more people to the saving knowledge of truth. The Lord can tell you the same thing. Stephen can talk to you about God's plan. You see, Stephen didn't want bad kidneys, but all of a sudden, God made a change in Stephen's life. Was there anything? What's what Stephen wanted? But God has a plan for what He's going to do with that life, just because of what's going on with His kidneys. No, Our God's not the same. He's alive and he's awake. I don't, I don't like him in the house. God's plan for Betty Crosby was that the doctor would give uh, her the wrong medicine when she was a baby, resulting in her blindness. And rather than going bitter, Betty Crosby used her condition to make her more spiritually sensitive. She wrote some of the most beautiful hymns that we sing today. His ways are not our ways. God brings the death of H.G. Stafford's children to inspire him to write one of the, our favorite hymns. Now Stafford's wife and kids were on a ship, ship to England, and he was going to join them there in a short time. However, the ship with his family on board sank. His wife was saved. But his kids all died. Back home, Stafford awaited news as to save his family. And when it finally came, it was a telegram from his wife simply saying, Stay alone. Stay alone. And Stafford, while mourning their death, wrote these words. It is one of our favorite hymns. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows rolling, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Amen? And we say that today ourselves, at the times that we're in and the things that we've gone through. Can we actually say, it is well with my soul. God didn't ask after if he was okay to make that part of his plan for him. No. And I'm sure Stafford didn't plan more in himself. But as difficult as God's plan was, it has resulted in something that has blessed countless members of suffering souls since it was written. And while you and I may not think our lot in life is nearly that tragic, nor in our influence nearly that broad, the truth it is, if we will agree to follow God's plan, no matter how difficult, eternity will record a far-reaching impact for God because of it. Amen? Amen. Mary, did you know that all these things were in store at your young age? Did you know it? Joseph, did you know that God had a plan far beyond anything that you would ever experience and go through? No, neither one knew. But God used them in a very powerful and wonderful and mighty way that this story will continue to be told throughout the years until Jesus comes back. So when I ask you the question, did you know, Jack, did you know that you would end up losing a home? 
No. Maureen, did you end up knowing that you would get rheumatoid arthritis? No. God had a plan. Barb, did you know that you would lose your brother? God had a plan. Amen? Every single one of us in this room, God has a plan. We've all gone through things. We've all suffered horrible things. But know that in the midst of it all, he has been there to guide us through it. He hasn't left us by ourselves for one single moment. He has been there to love on us, to strengthen us, to pray for us, to intercede on our behalf. We are not alone. And everything that we've gone through is going to be used to be able to tell somebody else about Jesus, to share what God has done for each and every one of us. Our testimonies are meant to help somebody else. And I believe the harder those testimonies are, the more painful they are, the more of an impact they have on other lives that we are able to share with other people. Amen? Amen. So let's stand this morning. Let's stand and let's give God the glory. Let's thank Him for the painful times in our lives. Because we have not been alone. He has been with us every single moment of the day. He has fought the good fight for us. We are still here to praise Him. We are still here to say thank you, Jesus. You have a plan, and we are in that plan. And He is going to do amazing things to us if we just get out of the way and let the Spirit of God flow through each and every one of us. Nothing is too difficult for God. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message, Lord. You don't have to ask our permission. You are God all by yourself. And you know exactly what you are calling each and every one of us to go through. We are to represent you, Lord, in the good times, but also in the hard times. We are to praise you, Lord, in the good times and in the not-so-good times. But, Lord, you remain the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And there is never anything too difficult for our God. We praise you, Lord, for every storm that has come our way. We thank you that we can trust in you, Lord God. And we just pray that you would strengthen those right now that are in the midst of that battle, in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that hurt. And I just want to encourage you to say that you are not alone. God is right there with you every step of the way. He has the plan. He's interfered with your plan. But he still has a better plan. And we love you and we thank you for that this morning. Sing a song, sing that song. Mary did you know? Ryan. Just stare back and listen. Did you know? Did you know? Thank you. 